Okay, I'm going to take you through a strength and mobility routine. Um, no equipment. This is I designed this specifically to take up very minimal space and with no equipment. There is an option to use a mini band if you have one or if you would like. It is not required. It is not necessarily. It's just a way to add something to the workout if you like to travel with these, but you don't need them. Um, it, this is a great thing to do if you're in a bind, um, your regular space isn't available. If you're in a hotel um, and you don't have a lot of space, especially if you're in a hotel and you don't want lots of jumping because you're not on the ground floor, there was no jumping here. Um, like I said, this is strength and mobility. So we're gonna focus on some core work at the beginning, um, mainly core work, but full body. Uh, and then we'll move into some mobility work um, and it's a great active recovery. If you still wanna get a little bit of resistance training in there, still work on a little bit of strength, but help your joints and your muscles and your body to recover, um, this is a great thing to do. Um, overall, the entire routine should take you between 35 and 45 minutes. This video is going to be shorter because I'm only going to go through one set of each one. And then after my set, I recommend that you pause the video do the rest of your sets, however many you're gonna do, and then press play when you're ready to move on to the next circuit. So put on your own playlist, your own music for this. Um, if you want a water bottle, you can. You may want a mat. Um, I'll pull mine out later. Um, if, you tr if you're traveling, you probably don't have one. If the ground at the hotel that you're at is really hard and you don't have a mat, I just recommend using a pillow or a blanket or you could lay some towels down just so it's soft on your joints like your knees um, or your shoulders or your elbows, things like that. Um, but other than that, I think we're ready to get started. So uh, the rules are simple. For each circuit, we're going to complete two to three sets before moving on. Um, and we're gonna perform, I'll, I'll tell you what the repetition counts that are listed are, uh, as well as the tempo patterns. So um, we're gonna start with our core two to three sets. As I said, go ahead and hit play on your workout playlist. Um, and don't forget to start your heart rate monitor if you use one. Okay, um, we're gonna start with single leg balance hold. So there's two ways we can do this. One option is just to hold the knee up if you prefer to hold the knee with your arms, that's totally fine, or with your hands, um, we're gonna be holding 10 seconds and we're gonna do it three times on each leg. So here's option one. Option two, if your hip flexors are feeling up to it, is to extend that leg out for the 10 seconds. All right, so we're going 10 second hold, one second recovery, and then right back in for another 10 seconds. So we're gonna go three times on the right side, three times on the left side. So go ahead and start with me. We're gonna go in three, two, one. I'm gonna start out this first round with that bent knee, pulling it into the knee. If you wanna work your abs a little bit more, don't hold the knee with your arms, with your hands. Arms can be out for balance. And there we are at 10. Go ahead and drop. One second, right back up. Five, three, two, one. Bring it down. For this last one, I'm going to go ahead and extend my knee, or I'm, my, excuse me, my leg. Point that toe to your nose. And it's totally fine if you're still right here. We're holding and three, two, one, bring it down. All right, left side is done. I'm gonna switch to, sorry, right side's done. We're gonna switch to the left. Go ahead and pull that knee up. We're gonna get going in three, two, one. Lift that knee. Show you from the side here. We're warming up the balance. You should be pulling up on your knee as if you're a marionette abs are pulling up on that knee. Go ahead and drop the leg, one second hold, and right back up. Three, two, one, bring it down. Last round of this first set, I'm gonna go ahead and extend that leg. Make sure you're zipping up that rib cage, the low abs. 
eight, nine, and 10. Bring it down. Whew, nice work. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our second movement, which is a static bear. And this is where there's an option to use this mini band. I'm gonna show you how to use it with, do it with the mini band. There's no difference if you don't have a mini band, you just won't pry the knees the same way. Um, <clears throat> okay, so static bear, you're gonna go ahead and get down on all fours. Make sure those hands are stacked under the shoulders, knees are stacked right under the hips. So I don't wanna be too scrunched up like this. I see that a lot. So a uh, nice quadruped position with a flat back. I'm not popping my butt up into the air, bracing those abs like I'm, if, you, if I come and push you over, you're gonna be stable, you're not gonna move. All right, so this static bear, I'm gonna tuck my toes under just like this. Eyes are, or neck is neutral. And then watch my knees here. I raised them off the floor about an inch and a half, maybe two. And I'm just gonna hold here. We're going for eight to 10 breaths. So that's your rep count. So if you have the mini band on here, I'll tell you when we start. You have the mini band on here, your option is to be prying your knees apart with that band. So there's facing forward from the side right here. Prying the knees apart with each rep. That's just gonna activate the glutes, get a little bit more strength into those. Okay, so if you have your band, great. If you don't have a band, just as great. We're gonna do, uh, let's see, eight to 10 breaths, and then we'll move on to our side plank, okay? So here we go in three, two, one. Nice deep breaths. Your back should be flat as a board. All right, and come down when you hit your eight to 10 breaths, whatever your rep count is today. All right, we're gonna move right into our third core movement, side plank. We're gonna go, we're gonna do three different planks today. First, we're gonna do a right side side plank, a right side side plank, <laughs> then we're gonna do a front plank and then a left side side plank. Five to six breaths on our side planks and then eight to 10 breaths on the front plank. I'll show you as we get to each spot. So. These are your next three exercises. So we're gonna go ahead and do it as I'm explaining it. So go ahead and start making your way down to the ground if you're not already. And we're gonna come up on the side. These side planks, there are a couple options we have here. First option that's really great as you're building stability is to kind of scissor these feet just like so. And then when you pop your hips up, you have a nice base of support from your, let, from your feet down there. Next option, Oh, with that option, those scissored feet, please notice how my top leg is in front. We don't wanna see your back or your top leg in the back because what's that? what that's gonna do is open up your hips. We want those hips to stay stacked perpendicular to the ground. Next option is to stack the feet. This is gonna decrease your base of support and make it a little bit more challenging to stay stable. So if you have shoulder pain, the scissors, position might be a little bit better spot for you. Um, see where you're at, see what feels good for your body. I'm gonna go ahead and stack today. And then we're gonna drive the hips up for five to six breaths. So one, and six. All right, drop those hips. So big thing I want you to notice here, is keeping the hips stacked, as I mentioned. We don't want them to come open, start opening up at any point. So one thing you can do is you can have an arm up for balance. If it's easier to put it on your hip, that's fine too. Don't put it on the ground because that's gonna ruin your plank by having you close up your shoulders. All right, moving on to front plank, eight to 10 breaths. Most people have done this one before. Down on your elbows. I want the difference here that you may not have done before is a lot of people do their planks with their feet out here. Nothing wrong with that. Wider base of support. Let's challenge ourselves and bring those heels together. And I want you to squeeze those heels, knees, and glutes the entire time that you're planking. Okay, so we're gonna go for eight to 10 breaths starting in five seconds. 
Three, two, one. Squeeze those glutes, knees, and heels. If you're shaking, that's where the magic happens. And recover. Nice work, you guys. I'm gonna move on to our left side plank. So before we get too recovered, go ahead and flip sides. Get that elbow stack right under the shoulder. Pick your, pick your option for your feet, stacked or scissored. Remember, if you're scissoring, top leg goes in front. All right, we're gonna go for five to six breaths in three, two, one. Stack those hips and drive them to the ceiling. If anything, you're thinking of closing your hips rather than opening them. Nice and stacked. And bring it down. Nice work, you guys. All right, that is our core circuit. So now would be a great time to pause the video, grab a sip of water if you want, and then you're gonna go back and do that core circuit two to three times. So if you wanna rewind, or if you just want to follow along on your paper if you are if you have uh, my program with you. Okay, if uh, now that you've done your two to three sets of your core work, we're gonna move on to our mobility circuit. So this is where I'm gonna pull out my mat. But as I mentioned, you do not need one if you're in a hotel and you don't have one, um, but the ground is pretty hard. I recommend pulling out some towels, maybe a pillow or maybe uh, the, the comforter on your hotel bed or something like that would work too. Okay, let's get going. Even this out just a little bit. All right, okay. So we have quite a few exercises here. You can go through this circuit as many times as you would like. I recommend going through it at least twice, preferably three, but depending on what kind of time you have today. We're gonna get a lot of mobility into the entire body and work on some flexibility. So let's first start with our quadruped hip circles. We're gonna make come down to our quadruped position, down on all fours. And then we're gonna go for five in each direction. So we're gonna go five clockwise, five counterclockwise. So notice how my knees are planted the entire time. You can tuck the toes or keep them flat, whatever if just feels more comfortable for you. I like tucking them. Okay, so these hip circles, with the knees planted, I'm making as big of a circle as I can with my hip bones, keeping my knees and hands planted. So we're gonna go five to the right, five to the left. So we'll go ahead and start in three seconds. Two, one, five slow circles. Going clockwise. You may feel or hear some crunching in the hips and that's okay as long as it feels good. You're getting a lot of mobility in there that you don't typically get in your regular day to day. This is a really great one if you sit in the car or at your desk a lot. If you're going with my pace, this is our last one clockwise and we're gonna switch to counterclockwise or to the left, whatever's easier for you to think about. You may be feeling a little bit of a stretch in your glute muscles too, and that's totally okay. I think this feels so good, this one. You guys might be hearing my joints popping all over the place <laughs> through the microphone, I can't tell. All right, last one there. Okay, really nice. Let's go ahead and move on to our cat cow. So we're gonna stay in quadruped position right here. Lots of people have done cat cow before. Cat, you're arching that back up, tucking the tailbone in as much as you can. So don't just think about arching the back and the rounding the shoulders, but think about tucking your tailbone. Think about making those hips as small as you possibly can. And then arching into that cow, pulling the shoulders back, hiking the hips up and, or popping the hips up into the air as much as possible. And then we're gonna go ahead and go back. We're doing 10 of these. 
So it's 10 cats, 10 cows. So nice and slow. Let gravity pull your head down into the ground. Make sure you're connecting with your breath all throughout this movement. Few more here. Really hit your max depth and height with these. Last one. As you increase your range of mobility with each rep. All right, guys, moving on to our child's pose. So we're still gonna be on the mat. Child's pose and right left side bends. So I'll show you what that is. I'm gonna face you guys. So try, well, I'll show you child's pose first. You're gonna want the knee, the heels flat or the feet flat rather than tucked in if you can. If that bothers your ankles, then just tuck your toes, it's no problem. But if you can, get those feet flat and then you're gonna sink those hips back into the heels and then go ahead and reach forward with those hands as far as you can. I have kind of a thicker mat. Sometimes, sometimes I actually like to kind of hold on to the end of the mat with my fingertips. And it just kind of allows me to relax my shoulders a little bit more. So I'm gonna face you while you keep doing it. We're gonna hold five to six breaths in this position. And then what you're gonna do, go ahead and watch me. You're gonna to bend to one side. You're gonna take your your uh, child's pose over to your left side for another five to six breaths. Keep relaxing the low back and the glutes. When you think they're all the way relaxed, go ahead and switch to the right side if you haven't already. Even if you feel like they're all the way relaxed, see if you can relax deeper. It's likely that you can. Breathe deep into that belly for this last one. All right, go ahead and walk yourself up. And we're gonna move on to our top of push-up hold to down dog. So top of push-up hold is just exactly where you would be if you're about to do a push-up. So you're in that high plank. Feet are close together again, like with our the plank we did previously. Squeeze those heels, knees, and glutes. Most important thing with any plank here is don't pike your hips and don't let those hips sink. You wanna be one flat board all the way from your head to your heels. All right, so this top of push-up hold to down dog, we're holding top of push-up hold for two seconds as we push into a down dog. We're gonna hold our dot down dog for 10 seconds and then you're gonna roll one vertebrae at a time back to that top of push-up hold. So this is called a 2 tempo. And what that means is we're taking two seconds to pop into down dog and then 10 seconds here, two, 10. And then the last two, two, 10, two, two seconds to roll back out of it to the beginning of our, of our rep count. Okay, with that down dog, lots of different things we can focus on. But what I would like you to focus on today is getting those hips as high towards the ceiling as you possibly can. So if your knees are bent, Heels are off the ground, totally okay. But see if you can get that nice flat back as if someone were pulling your hips up with a seat belt towards the ceiling. Okay, we're gonna get going with top of push up hold to down dog. We're gonna go five times. Um, we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna go five times. And we're gonna start in five seconds. So start making your way to that top of push up hold. All right, three. Two, one, here we go. So drive those hips up. And then you can explore here. We're only here for 10 seconds. But you can pedal the feet if you want. You can just hold still. And then slowly roll to top of push-up hold. And we begin again. Go ahead and push back. Breathe deep into the belly. 
This is an active recovery routine, the whole thing. Don't want your heart rate to get up too high for any of these. And roll one vertebrae at a time. Get on top of push-up hold. All right, here's number three. See if you can drive those hips even higher. Just let go of the struggle. It feels so amazing when we can just release the struggle. All right, roll back up, top of push-up hold. And right back into down dog. My mic always falls out when I'm doing this pose. Okay. Three, two, one. Go ahead and roll back. I believe we have one more. Sorry if I'm off on my count. I think this is number five. Sorry if it's number six. All right, five more seconds. Dig deep into that movement, into that position. All right, roll one vertebrae at a time. And then go ahead and slowly lower yourself. All right, go ahead and pick yourself up. Losing my mic. Okay, and we are moving into Sphinx Pose. It's called Sphinx Pose and Find Your Shoes. So we're gonna come down. I'm gonna show you this way again. I'm gonna actually get rid of this for one second so it's easier to see where my legs are. Okay, so if I'm facing you, actually I'll face this way first. So Sphinx Pose itself, you're gonna lay down flat on your belly. Start picking your upper body up right around your sternum, or if you had a sports bra on, right where your sports bra line would be. My elbows are right about that at sternum level on the ground. So hands just outside the shoulders. And then I'm going to lift my upper body as much as I can without my hands. So if you were to let go of your, bring your hands up, your body's not gonna come falling down. So that's where we are with our Sphinx position. I want you to think about pulling your shoulders down into your back pockets, create good tension up there. We don't want bad tension up in your neck, pulling your shoulders up. So once you find this Sphinx pose right here, eyes are looking forward. Now's when I'm gonna show you facing you guys. So right in that Sphinx pose, and here's the find your shoes part. You're gonna look at your shoelaces, okay? So keeping the arms planted, look to one side and then the other. So I'm really getting a good stretch in my neck as I do this because I'm not picking up my opposite arm. I don't wanna see that. I'm gonna keep that planted. So it's a small movement. You're not gonna be able to move very much. Go ahead and join me whenever you're ready. And we are gonna go for five on each side and we're gonna hold for three seconds as we look back at our shoes. And then go ahead and look front for one and alternate. Keep thinking about those shoulders, sliding them down your back into your back pockets. All right, let's go for one more on each side. Three second hold. You're almost there. Ooh, keep squeezing. All right, recover guys. Okay, we're gonna move on to our 90-90 shin box. So this one's down on the ground. You're gonna sit on your butt. And then the easiest way to start out, I think, is to spread your legs like this. So you have about 90 degrees behind the knee. That's why it's called 90-90 shin box. So find that 90 degree angle behind the knee. And then you're gonna roll the knees down to one side. So if I'm going to the left, when I lay them down, look at all these 90 degree angles. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay. Um, so again, from here, 90 degree angles behind my knees, roll to one side, both knees go the same direction. Once you're here, you're gonna sink kind of like at that child's pose. You're gonna reach those arms out over the knee. Go ahead and join me in this position as soon as you're there. We're gonna hold for uh, about 30 seconds each side.
And then you can kind of pay attention to where it feels best for your body. Most people like to go straight out over their knee. But if you're a little bit more flexible, you might want to go closer to your foot, kind of anywhere in this span between your foot and your shin and your, sorry, your foot and your knee should feel good. So find a good sweet spot for you. And go ahead and walk yourself up before you come out of that position. Just roll your knees back to that starting position and roll it to the right side, just the opposite. So double check your angles if you need to adjust, make sure you got 90s everywhere. And then when you're ready, 30 seconds, go ahead and sink down. You should feel a nice deep stretch in the glutes, the hamstrings, the hips. And just breathe. The hips are truly the junk drawer of our bodies. And our hips need all the love they can get. So your hips will be thanking you. All right, go ahead and walk yourself back up when you're ready. Roll back up to that starting position and then go ahead and come up just to your knees. So we're moving on to a hip flexor stretch. So we're gonna go one time on each leg. I'll show you how you do it. And we're gonna hold for 10 breaths. So from the side, kind of down in this lunge position or this kind of proposal position, like you're asking someone to marry you. And then a lot of what I see with this hip flexor stretch, we're getting a nice stretch down the front of this leg and on the hip. I see people drive their knee forward and it's like, whoa, you're so flexible, you can go so far. Not true. That's because they're driving with their knee, not their hip. So what I want you to do is tuck that tailbone and then drive forward with the hip rather than the knee and you won't be able to go very far, but you're gonna get a much deeper stretch down the front and side of that planted leg. So go ahead and pop into one side as soon as you're ready. Start the countdown in three, two, one. And then just go ahead and sit here for 10 breaths. Continually driving with the hips, not the knee tucking that tailbone. Oftentimes loosening up the front of the hips can help alleviate tension in the back of the hips, which would be a lot of low back pain. Let's go ahead and switch legs if you haven't already. Show you from this angle this time. All right, when we're ready, tuck that tailbone and drive the hips forward, not the knees. 10 breaths here. Lean into your music and lean into the tension as you breathe it out and release it. Let those hips be happy. All right, two more breaths here. And we're gonna move on to, go ahead and come out of it. We're gonna move on to our open half kneel stretch. We're gonna do eight of these. Lots of you guys have done these with me before. If you've been working with me in the past, um, I'm going to show you uh, how to do them. These are seriously probably my favorite uh, mobility exercise, and it's one of my favorite warm ups for any uh, strength training workout. Okay, so from your knees, you're going to lift one leg up. So we were just in this lunge position. All you're doing is you're opening that leg out. So from the side, I'm going to give you some important key tips here. For technique. So right now you cannot see my back leg because it's hidden. That's exactly where it's hidden behind this leg. That's exactly where I want you to be. I don't want your foot to be in front of this knee and you don't want your foot to be behind your planted knee. So find that sweet spot right in line with your planted knee. Again, up to you if you want a flat foot or if you want to tuck the toe for some extra balance. Doesn't matter, whatever feels best for you. All right, now what I'm doing, my hips are square. With this knee up, it's easy for me to want to rotate my hips towards this knee. No, we want to keep this hip open by keeping headlights. I want you to imagine like you've got headlights on your hip bones right here. You want to be able to see those at all times. Prying this knee back into the wall behind you, you're going to slide the knee over the toe and then bring it back. 
So nice and slow for eight. Go ahead and join me. We're gonna start the eight count rep count right now. So here's our first one. Getting a nice deep stretch in the inner thigh, right up into the groin, and then really getting a lot of mobility into that hip joint itself. Your hips are gonna love you for doing this one. So I'm continually pushing my knee back into the wall. I'm not just resting it. So pay attention to that. All right, let's go ahead and switch sides. Bring that left leg up. Make sure it's in line with the planted knee. Um, it doesn't matter what you do with this hand. You may have noticed I, I will sometimes hold it on this hip just to make sure that I'm staying square, that I'm not starting to rotate it, but wherever is comfortable for you to keep it. All right, go ahead and slide that foot over the toe for eight. While you guys are doing this, a lot of people really rush their reps because they want to be done faster. Especially with mobility work, I really recommend you take this nice and slow. Really get to know the tension in the joints that you're, that you're working on, as well as the muscles. What part of the muscle feels tense for you? All right, two more. Last one, keep pushing that knee into the back wall. All right, okay. So before we move out of this, we're gonna go ahead and go so our next move is open half kneel T-reach. So this is to get a little bit of mobility and tension relief in the thoracic spine, which is your upper back up here. Um, so go ahead and we're gonna go back into that open half kneel position. Same side we started on last time, your right. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this opposite hand. And you're gonna put it, place it down in front of you. Sometimes people ask me how far in front of my planted leg should my arm be? The answer to that is a, about the length of your shin bone. So sometimes I'll just take my hand down directly in front and then say, mm, about how long is my shin bone? Okay, right there. So go ahead and pop into that position when you're ready from down here with this arm, same arm as your knee that is up, pressing back into the wall. You're gonna go ahead and rotate up into that T. So what I want you to pay attention to here is your thumb in your hand. So I'm gonna come back in for another rep. I'm continually pressing my knee into the wall behind me. And then I'm following my thumb with my eye as I open up that palm towards me. Go ahead and join me. We're gonna start our rep count. We're going eight on each side. So here's our first one. Keep pushing that knee into the wall behind you. And make sure that palm is facing me. It should feel really good on the shoulders. All right, one more here, and then we'll move to the other side. And finish at the bottom, because you started at the bottom. All right, other side. Find that correct spot, push the knee back into the wall, plant the hand and follow that thumb with the eye. So you're getting a nice twist in the thoracic spine here. Well, really the entire spine here. And then you're also really getting a lot of mobility into the actual scapula, those big shoulder muscle or shoulder blades on your back. Really make sure you're following that thumb with your eye. We'll get a little bit more of a twist and you'll be able to open up that shoulder a little more. All right, one more here. All right, very nice. Okay, we've just got two more. So stick with me. First, we've got a seated neck roll. So you have a couple options here. You can see, sit in an actual chair or if you'd rather sit on the ground, that's fine. I actually personally feel like it's best to be seated in a chair, which I don't have down here. I'm gonna use my little bench. So go ahead, I'll give you a second to get your chair or bench or whatever you're using today. Okay, 
So once you find your spot, the seated neck roll, we are gonna go for five each direction. So sitting comfortably, however you want, make sure you have good posture, you're not slumped over, you're not arching your back, popping the chest. So that neck roll, just go ahead really slowly, let gravity pull the top of your head as you rotate. You can take these as slow as you want. Five all the way in one direction and then five in the other. I don't recommend alternating, but you can. Pay attention to what parts of your neck roll you feel your shoulder tensing up and inching up into your ears. And that's where you have more tension. All right, go ahead and switch sides. We were going clockwise, now we're going counterclockwise. Neck rolls are really great for anybody that sits and works at a computer all day and for everybody, because I don't know hardly anyone that doesn't have a smartphone and isn't looking down at their smartphone all day either. So it's always extra good to get some mobility in the neck. All right, one more. And just one more exercise. Stay seated. We have our seated neck side bend. So this is, this is one that people, Everybody's done this before, but it's important that you're that you have good form, good technique, that you know where you're pulling from, so that you don't injure yourself. Um, so this neck side bend, we're going to hold for ten sec, ten breaths on each side. So I don't want to just see people crank their neck like this, pulling from the top. That's how you might injure yourself or pull in in the wrong direction. What you want to do is you want to take, find where your ear is and pull from there. Sometimes I'll even stick my, like, um, what is this, the Star Trek sign? <laughs> Sometimes I'll even kind of do that between my ear. So your, your hand is coming all the way across your head and it's a really gentle pull. And I want you to imagine you're not pulling directly to the side, but I want you to imagine you're almost pulling up at a diagonal. 10 breaths, just ever so gently. Getting a nice deep stretch all down these muscles and even up a little bit into your scalp muscles if you're pulling at that diagonal angle. Just really lean into the struggle here and let go of that tension. All right, once you hit 10, go ahead and come back up to a neutral position and we're gonna go the other side. So find that spot by your ear and then pull ever so gently, diagonal up. Find that angle where you can feel the stretch all the way from this pointy shoulder bone, reaching up into your scalp, almost up towards these fingers. I recommend opening up the palm of this opposite hand. So just keep the shoulders a little bit more open. All right, a few more breaths here. Really exhale any of that struggle and any of that tension. Don't bring it with you back into real life after your workout is done. All right, you guys, go ahead and come out of it. This would be a great time to pause or rewind. Go back and do that mobility circuit two, one to two more times for a total of two to three sets. Your joints and muscles should already be feeling more flexible and mobile than they did before. I always recommend tracking your progress um, in your progress journal. Note the date, how many sets of each circuit you performed and how things felt. Um, if, you choose, if you chose to use weights for anything uh, with the core work, uh, just note the load in your progress journal as well. Thank you guys. Um, leave comments or feedback, um, things that you would wanna see um, and good luck. Have an awesome, core and or strength and mobility workout. Talk to you guys soon.